from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. You know the time. It is the hour now for you to wake up from your sleep. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is advanced. The day is at hand. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as of the day, not in orgy or drunkenness, not in rivalry or jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the desire of the flesh. The word of the Lord. When St. Paul writes his letter, but first of all, he is in the prison of Palestine, and there he, just a Philippian, there he is thinking seriously that these people who have left Jerusalem, and they left with the mark of Christ in them, in other words, they were converted to Christianity, they went among pagans, and now they are seeing the pagans how they live. And before you know it, they are going to be attractive to that life. And some of them, they are living two lives, which we call it the life of lie. At the Agape, they are all for Christ. When they leave the Agape, that means when they leave the service, the celebration of the Eucharist, they are living as pagans. And Paul took his pen and fine and quickly he reminded them that that is not the way we live. And that's why he said to them, wake up from your sleep. Now is the hour. It is more now than before we believe. Because the Lord is coming and each one of us have to render a judgment. And so you don't go back to darkness. You don't go back to sin. That sin that he expressed here, which is orgy, and all those kinds of drunkenness, to rivalry, to jealousy, but put on the armor of Christ, that light that you receive, and fight against anything that comes in your way of Christ. And then he concludes and say, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the desire of the flesh. My dear people, we know that this flesh is our biggest enemy. It wants, it wants comfort. It wants everything that make it easy going. Does not want any sacrifice, does not want anything. But the more comfort I can become, the more I want it. And the more I have, the more I want. And that's why St. Paul said, do not make any provisions for the desire of the flesh. Because this flesh is against the truth. This flesh is against that life. This flesh is against Jesus Christ. Because it comes from one foundation. And that is from the garden of of Eden, disobedience to God. And that is what human nature is all about. To try to defile even God's will. To defile even God's wishes. And don't tell me I am the Pope or the Bishop or whoever I am. Because within us we have that tendency that if we don't control it and control it by three important factors, we are not going to make it. First of all, prayer. Prayer is not saying the rosary and look at the windows and oh, it's coming in. Prayer is not saying the novenas. Prayer is when you open your heart and dialogue with the Lord, especially in the Eucharist. This, every first Friday, we have a great treasure in this parish, dear people. You don't find it in other parishes, you know that. Maybe the priests do not believe in it either. I believe 500%, million percent, 
when the community kneeled kneel in front of him, he will give us more than we ask for. Because he promised. That's prayer. When you spend time in dialogue with the Lord, when you open your heart and pour your heart to him and tell him how much tribulations and sadness and things are going in your heart. And he knows. Because he was one of us. He can understand where we're coming from. And that's why he said, ask and you shall receive. Knock and will be opened. Come to me all who labor and find my burdens and I will refresh you. Do we believe it? We come here Friday night for benediction, four people. Other age, holy hour, four people. When we are busy on Friday, Father, we go shopping. Go shopping. You know how much it takes to stop your shopping and your nonsense? A blood clot. A heart attack. Oh, how fast you stop your scheduling and running here and there. My dear people, this is why not only prayer, but lead us to sacrifice. To make those sacrifices that are really important. You say, I cannot make Sunday Mass because I have this, 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 and this. And there is where you make the effort to go to church. Because what it is that you open uh, your, your, your bedroom and you go to bed and you take a shower and put yourself together and then put yourself in the car. What, what, what difficult is that? There is no difficulty in that. But when you have something that is going to conflict with what you want to do for God, there you see how much God is going to win. That is love for Jesus. Love is not to say, oh, I love you, God. That's not love. Love is sacrifice. It's like that husband who would like to go after work, to go with his guys, they have what different things. But he come home and he see his wife and two kids, changing diapers, trying to make them put dinner together, and this and, and he will take his, 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 change his clothes, put his sleeve on, and begin to help her. That's all. Love is not how much she said to her in a car, I love you, honey. That's all love. Love is when you become Sometimes less than the one you love. That's love. There's no greater love than this. Then God become nothing like you and I. So you and I can become somebody. It's not my words. The words of St. Paul in the Philippines. In the eyes of flesh we cannot see his divinity. Because you all drop dead if you see God as he is. He hides behind the, behind the species. Why? So he can come closer to us. So we can come closer to him. And we have this great mystery. And we still remain. That's why St. Paul said, Don't give it to the flesh. Because the flesh will ruin you. All people who are in prison, all people who are in hell, you know why? Because they gave too much to this. And when you give to this, you are going to be sorry. Because flesh begot flesh. But spirituality or divinity begot divinity. And dear people, as we come to the celebration in this season of that, I ask you to really spiritualize this season. Make an effort to go to Mass during this season. You said it's not Lent, Father. Only in Lent you make a sacrifice. I hope that you make it every day. You say, hey, coming up is too early, go to St. Teresa. Fine, but at least you go. Make a sacrifice. Go to Mass. Well, you are working at lunchtime. You know that next door there is a Mass at 12, whatever. Some people work in Camden. There is 12.05 Mass there at the cathedral. Make a sacrifice. Try to do something extra. Try to tell the Lord how much you love him. Not by saying, oh, I went to Mass today, dear people. No. Jesus said, when you do something, when you pray, go. Lock yourself in, in, your, in, your, in your room there. And uh, the Father who knows what you do, he will pay you. <coughs> 
sometimes you know we go to the seasons of the church like uh, we have to go through them because and we don't understand the depth you know in the bulletin we publish the uh, the readings of the day you cannot go to mass can you open the bible and read them so that you will be prepared and open your heart for the message this is why the season is so beautiful and now after the two weeks of, of Advent, you are going to hear the proper readings. Huh? We call it the Novena of Christmas. Those beautiful antiphons, those beautiful readings that remind us how much God loved His chosen people. And from them, He sent His Son to be incarnate. And that promise of the chosen people, we inherit it. St. Paul today reminds us that if we are in a society that is sinful and we are going to join them, we are going to go back to our enslavement. We want to be free and only in Christ we can be free.